welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Chat Sports Talk. You know, my name is Chat. Take a dive into sports. Welcome to the NFL Super Wild Card Weekend. That's right, the postseason is here. It's time to look at the one and done tournament to find out who is going to the Super Bowl out there in Glendale, Arizona. And we have a full slate of action coming up uh, following this Friday the 13th. Thus, I'm wearing my Jason shirt. <laughs> um, so let's kind of see how things kind of pan out. But before I get into these spooky details, if you go ahead and give me that thumbs up, especially if the content provider really helps uh, prompt this channel, really pleases you two gods. You also subscribe. Love you guys for viewing my work. I love you all for doing that. Now, me, you're subscribed. It's cost you a dime. It helps me provide more time value for you. Kind of go go with, with uh, uh, my, my two picks for the Super Bowl are still in here. So, my picks are going to kind of gear towards those two, ensuring they're matching up. So, so I might pick some lopsided ones in here and might not. Let's go ahead and start off with Saturday's action. We'll do this. Uh, Late Saturday afternoon, where the Seahawks head to Santa Clara to take on the 49ers in a huge uh, uh, NFC West rematch between these two. And Seattle is just one of these teams that's very, very well coached. They have a very some talented members on the offense that could get the 49 defense some issues. It's the Seattle defense. Can they do the same with the 49ers offense? And my answer to that question is no. And it doesn't matter who the quarterback is for the 49ers. I think Justin Fields will will, will uh, be well in here. Mims could be be a, a superstar in this offense. Uh, take nothing against Brock Purdy, who seems to be a little bit better than Jimmy G. Just just a little, but he has taken Mister Relevant. Um, he has he, he has taken that tone and just ran with it. It's like no one expects him to do anything. So why not just go out there and just do your thing? Um, he was like that in Iowa State. Um, he's proven that now. He's thriving under this uh, particular uh, scheme. So it could probably means that, you know, Jimmy G could find his way out the door. And then just go with Trey Lance and, and, and Brock Purdy. And we're looking at this one. Uh, uh, the Four ers have a, a very good defense themselves, and we'll see if, if uh, McCaffrey is enough for the Four ers which I really think it is. I think uh, running back wise, I give it more to McCaffrey because he's a, a multi-facet running back that can only can run the ball, but also catch the ball. But I know Walker has actually uh, put up some decent numbers himself. He's a thousand-yard rusher. Receivers, um, you might go more with the Seahawks because of Lockett and Metcalf. But Debo Samuels is another one of those uh, multifaceted uh, 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 players as well. Ayuk is another one. And then, of course, having George Kittle. Um, the guy does everything and Brock Purdy's favorite target. So, going to aspect, I'm going, I'm going to give the edge to the 49ers. Right now, they're favored by 10. I think it will be a lot closer than that. I really do. I think it'll be decided by the leg of Robbie Gold. And I think it will be a three-point victory, but I do have the 49ers edging out the Seahawks. And then Saturday night, the Chargers head down to Jacksonville, take on surprise Jag uh, Jaguars as they won the in AFC South. But I think this is just a start of things to come for that organization, especially with Doug Peterson as the head coach, uh, Trevor Lawrence thrived underneath them. I you know, think he'll just continue to blossom. Uh, the defense is young. Uh, offense is young. But the Chargers have Justin Herbert, who has his third year, the third or fourth year now. He, he's like always so close, but never quite gets over the hump. And Nothing against him. I mean, he he's 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 excellent. He moves around. He does have some weapons. Unfortunately, he will not have Williams in this game. Uh, that's going to really hamper him. But having uh, Eckler in the backfield really kind of helps him out. But I give more to the Chargers defense, slightly over the Jaguars defense in this one. Right now, Chargers are favored by a point and a half, 
and I think it will be this close. I would not be surprised if Jacksonville won this game. I would not. Uh, just how uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence has been in these past f- a few weeks, the way his defense has really stepped up uh, and made some uh, uh, key uh, interceptions, especially the overtime winner against Dallas. And how they held that battle back against Tennessee to uh, win that game. So they have tenacity. They have fortitude. They're definitely one of these teams you have to watch out for. If not now, definitely in the future. But I'm going to get the slight edge to the, to the Jaguar, or Chargers. Excuse me. I'll say they can sneak out that one. Um, I think it will be that close. I think it will be that, that point and a half, two point, three point range. I think it's just... One mistake. That's all it's only going to take. Just one mistake. But I'll, I'll let the Chargers edge that one out. And then Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Let's go ahead and head off into Western New York where the Bills play host of the Dolphins. The Dolphins will be without Tua. Um, concussions have taken him out. I have a feeling that it might be a recurring theme for him for his career, which is un- unfortunate. Um, he had a lot of upside, especially when he had those dynamic receivers. Um, Skyler Thompson is going to be the starter, and it's leading the Lambs to the slaughter in this one. I think the Bills are just going to salivate this one. They're favored by 13 and a half right now. I'll pump the brakes on that one a bit. Uh, I will give them at least a 10-point victory. Just because it's a, it's a playoff game, I think Miami play them a lot tighter, and they have throughout you know, both meetings. You know, actually beating them once, and then it's a pretty close game the second time around because they ran the ball. And as long as Miami can find a way to get the running attack going, it will give Buffalo's defense some headaches. But as long as Josh Allen has uh, Stephon Diggs, it, it's all good. Um, Josh Allen can also run. Like I said, he's uh, he runs like a fullback. Built like a linebacker, um, but I think Buffalo should it, it win this game. One, this game hands down, and I go at least with a ten point victory. And then a very interesting matchup up there in Minneapolis between the Vikings and the Giants. The last time these two teams met, Minnesota had to come back from behind and went on a sixty yard field goal. It's going to be the same type of scenario. Um, as long as Daniel Jones can, can minimize his mistakes, the defense can then uh, focus in on uh, disrupting Kirk Cousins so that way he doesn't have time to find Jester Jefferson. Because it's definitely a one guy he cannot leave all by himself. Then you still got to worry about Thielen. I know Minnesota's got a lot of weapons, uh, but it's the defense that's their Achilles heel. And as long as uh, Saquon Barkley can run and run, that open up some uh, uh, some good play action for Daniel Jones to uh, uh, exploit, and he's talented enough to do that. They'll c- come up with a perfect scheme for him to be successful like they've had all season long. And Minnesota's favored by three right now. Let's flip that. I'll take the Giants to win on the road in Minnesota and knock off a 13 win Vikings, I think, is going to be one of the first uh, upsets of this postseason. And definitely would not be the last. But I think the Giants right now are, are, are coming in there now. The Minnesota could completely just dominate this game. And this is what their talent is supposed to do. And they've yet to do that. But I give it to the G Men. They didn't go to the jungle where the uh, Bengals play host of the Ravens. Facing them off once again. Um, Lamar Jackson has been ruled out. Apparently his uh, PCL strain is uh, uh, almost a class three. Um, his knee is, he's considered his knee unstable, which means he can't really use it very effectively. So that puts uh, Huntley back on chart, back on top, and Cincinnati is going to have a field day. Baltimore's defense will get the Bengals trouble. There's no question about that. Will Con Smith is one of those running back or linebackers you have to definitely uh, take it account for. He's now become one of the highest paid linebackers in the league. Congratulations to him on, on that contract. Um, but that offense will not function the same. Cincinnati's going to just, uh, 
I think dominate too much. Right now it's nine and a half for the Bengals. I doubt it'll be that much, um, regardless of who's quarterback. There's still Huntley still is capable enough to run that offense, but we have the time to do it. And that's the question, and I think it's just today's offense. There's too many weapons to, for really to uh, uh, corral uh, that attack, and I definitely will give the Bengals by a touchdown. That's that's all I'm going to give. I'll give them a touchdown this game, but Cincinnati should roll on. Then Monday night football. Tampa Tom will play a host to Dallas Dak in a key matchup in this postseason. There is a lot of underlining things in this one. Dak Prescott has thrown 15 interceptions in 12 games, including three straight pick sixes in the past three games. Tom Brady is 7-0 and against the Cowboys. They've already beaten, uh, beaten down uh, Dallas earlier, week one, 16-3. Now note, this is a whole, pretty much a whole season has gone past pretty much with these two teams. One of the problems that Dak has right now is 11 of his 15 interceptions have come against come against his own defenses. It's like he's not able to see uh, the layout of the defense for some reason. Dallas has kind of gone away from rushing, um, utilizing Elliott and Pollard the way they should be. I, it, it, some question marks right now going on with the Cowboys. Um, there's talking about that if McCarthy doesn't win, he's out. How about that one? Because you look how long they kept Garrett in Dallas. So, I don't know, unless, unless uh, uh, Jerry Jones found someone else that uh, he trusts more than McCarthy. And by the same level, he trusts uh, uh, Jason Garrett. I don't see McCarthy going anywhere. <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Because um, Jerry expects a lot from the Cowboys, as any owner does. But going to a uh, factor of this game, right now Dallas favored by two and a half. I understand why, because on paper, they look great. The defense has not been playing up to what the level it should be playing up to. I mean, look what Washington did to them the final week of the season. Uh, what Houston did to them. Tennessee, I mean, they have not lived up to the hype at all. Is that Quinn's fault? Is that McCarthy's fault? I don't know. Is it uh, uh, Mullen's fault for the offense kind of being uh, a little flat? There's a lot of blame to go around. The players have to step up and do their their, their jobs. And with Tom Brady, you cannot give him anything. If you give him anything, he'll find ways to exploit you. That has that is his mo. That's how he's able to come up with these so so many comeback victories this this season. Is teams have given him the opportunity, and the defense to step up. That front line for the Buccaneers will give Dak and the running backs trouble. Even though Dallas has a a phenomenal front line, I'm not I'm not doubting that front line at all. But I have a feeling that you know Tampa Bay's front line should make some uh, uh, some key plays. Disrupt Dak's timing, which end up assisting in some errant throws. As long as the receivers could, could catch him and not have him hitting the best part of the bodies, you know, the hands, have him pop up and get turned over, which tends to be a lot of his interceptions as well, is it hits the receiver and then they get popped up and then defenders right there go, oh, look, a gift. But because all those factors, I'm taking Tampa, Tom. Um, something about the uh, about Tom Brady in, in the playoffs. He, he's just a different animal. Um, this is a guy. Yeah, I think regular season means nothing right now. Everyone is starting anew. So even though Dallas has a better record than Tampa Bay, I will still go with, with the Buccaneers. Um, I think it's just how they will line up defensively, how they will scheme against Dak and, and that offense how they're able to neutralize certain aspects of the Cowboys' defense. And I think it, Dallas will let Tampa Bay hang in 
And Tampa Bay will come back and make a nice fourth quarter comeback once again, probably 10 points down, and end up winning the game. So then Dallas home in the first round exit. But there you go. That's the wild card pick. I'm not going to go any further than that. I'm just going to go keep going along. Like I said, my Super Bowl picks are the 49ers and Bills, so that's where everything's kind of going, getting geared toward to make sure those two face off. We'll see what happens. Um, should be a very entertaining weekend, to say the least. Unfortunately, I think uh, Baltimore and Miami's uh, postseason party come to an end because their star uh, quarterbacks are out. Uh, Cincinnati is poised uh, to make a nice deep run. Buffalo is definitely a, a, a team to watch out for. Same thing with San Francisco. But that Chargers-Jaguar game, uh, Saturday night in the Monday night matchup, including that Giants and Vikings matchup. Should be the big three of this weekend. Definitely ones I think you really should really pay attention to. Should be really entertaining. You can go either way. Um, I, I really think those games go either way. Even though I did pick the Chargers, the Giants, and the, the Bucks, I could see the other team winning too. As that, and that's how I think how close these games are going to be. But, hey, just let me know down in the comments below who you think is going to win this weekend, who is going to end up in the Super Bowl, while you're down there making your comments, you can also share this video with your friends and family or it helps support this channel out. You can also hit that, hit that thumbs up once again. Once you subscribe, make sure you click that bell icon and turn on notifications and next time I post any more content on my channel. And I will see you next time on Chat Sports Talk.